the rock steady. Speaker, the rock steady. Stadium subwoofer. So this is what they call the stadium, the rock steady, the company. Stadium seems to be the system. And the system is unlimited speakers connected wirelessly, not by Wi-Fi, but by Bluetooth. As many as you want, not just that. It's, well, there's lots of interesting things. So it's a bit mini rig like, but mm, it's not really the mini rig system. Not least because this is an entirely, and they say the world's first wireless portable Bluetooth speaker. So whereas the mini rig subwoofer needs to be wired, these are all wireless and that's fantastic. Except that mm, it's not by Wi-Fi, it is by Bluetooth. They say they're all about the, uh, the, high, the high end in the audio world but I'm not entirely convinced because of course, do you know what the codec is? It's SBC. So, mm, yep, I know there's arguments where you wouldn't notice the difference, blah, blah, blah. But if you really and truly was going high end, maybe you would not, you go, you go something a bit above SBC. We've actually got uh, proper lossless codecs coming uh, on board now. Now, let me give you an overview of these speakers. So this is the Rocksteady Stadium speaker. I think actually the stadium is what they call the actual system. The way they all connect to each other. If I turn this on, here's the first thing I'm not that big a fan of. On both the subwoofer and the satellite speakers, on off button is on the back. Got a lot of controls on the top. Could we have had the on off button on the top? But no. So here we are, turned it on, got flashing blue light. What does that mean? It means it's looking for a Bluetooth connection. When you have more than one and you need to hook them up together so that they're linked, maybe you want stereo or uh, you could have them as many as you want in party or stereo mode. But one of them has to be the host and they all connect to the host. When you have a subwoofer, they recommend the subwoofer is the host and then all the other speakers connect to the host. So only if I turn on the subwoofer will you see the Bluetooth light go blue. And if I've already got them connected to the host so they all play together, the stadium light will be white. But why don't we do that right now? As you can see, it's even harder to get to the on-off button on the subwoofer. Turn that one on there. Might as well quickly show you at the same time, even though it's upside down. They do charge by USB-C, that's really good. And they all have an auxiliary input. So old fashioned, isn't it? No, we still want auxiliary inputs. I have to say, in case you're getting excited, oh God, I'll just get the subwoofer and I'll, I'll use it with me uh, really, really small speaker. I'm trying to think, the, the Bose Soundlink thingy, small ones, no, something small. The Trubit Micro, for instance, or the Bose, the Bose Soundlink Micro. Can't do that, why? Because the auxiliary is an input only, so you couldn't play out from here. So you'd need the other device to have an auxiliary out, which is quite rare, but we do know Mini Rig have a pair of in-out auxiliary. We'll get onto that later, but here we are. As you can see, this is the host, and so all lights are blue. Whereas if I turn this on, the stadium light will be white, which is the stadium light, which is that one. And if I was coming in fresh, I'd be pressing stadium button so it would search for the host, and they'd all be connected. It's very industrial looking, they all come in black. This is not the first review I've seen of this setup, but most of the reviews I've seen either have the subwoofer on their own, or they're over a year old. And they also talk about this speaker having great bass. And here's the thing, this was a Kickstarter program um, that, I, that I signed up for, we paid for sometime during the year. I've had these for a few, a few months, about four months. I've just not had time to get to it. But I thought it was uh, new on the market. But you look at some of these reviews, they're from 2001. So I'm not quite sure if they're still relevant. And that's the thing. I'm sure you would tell me uh, that they are, but we'll, we'll wait and see. On the flap, the flappy thing on the back. By the way, you can wall mount them. They've got a little thing there. It could be wall mounted. And on the back, all of them, as I already said, USB-C connection and auxiliary input only. But the clever, clever thing. You would never expect that on an Alan video, a clever thing. They've got a little slider button. See, up the thingy. That's now gonna play left channel only. You down the thingy, it's a right channel only. And if you leave it in the middle, it's left and right. AKA, is that mono? Well, I thought that was mono, but when I spoke to Rock Stadium, they said, it's, no, it's not mono. I don't know what they meant, but they said, it's not mono. So the, I don't know if they're saying they've done something really clever. However, it's playing two channels via one tweeter, one woofer. And here's the other surprising thing, one woofer. 
What's the size of that woofer? Oh, well, I was going to tell you. The size of that woofer is 70 millimeters. 70 millimeters. One woofer. But we've got two passive radiators. Oh, that's brilliant. It's going to give you even more bass. No, because obviously uh, the passive radiators are sized to the woofer. They actually appear to be either the same or even slightly larger than the woofer. No, normally, at a minimum, you'd get almost an identical passive radiator to the woofer just without the voice call. It, it's going to be driven by the excursion of the woofer going in, the air pressure increasing and then pushing out on the passive radiator. Of course, the passive radiator does not play uh, deeper than the woofer. It, it plays exactly the same frequencies as the woofer, but just those frequencies that it's tuned to but the woofer has to still be playing them. So it fills them out, it makes it fuller, but it's not playing deeper than the woofer itself, it's just making it louder and, and that you can hear it more uh, because it's reinforcing those frequencies. And that's the point. It still needs to be driven by that one woofer. So that surprised me that they've got two passive radiators driven by one woofer, but I'm not a dear wire. Hey, what do I know? I'm just saying that was a surprise to me. But yeah, a satellite speaker, got a separate tweeter, got a separate woofer, obviously, and you can have unlimited speakers. You can connect as many of these, including subwoofers and satellite speakers, as you want. You may be thinking that's going to be good for surround sound or something like that. But no, it's got stereo decoding only, so it's not going to decode anything else, else other than a stereo, which is a shame, given how configurable. I mean, this is pretty unique, isn't it? You can actually set it without going into an app, and there is no app, but you can do it all on the speaker itself. And the other thing is how each individual speaker has its own volume up and down. So you you can, depending on how you set them up, you could have on the other side of the room where it could be up near you, but you want to match the volumes. So individually, you have the ability to go in and change, change that. But of course, if you want to play, once they are set up in the volume scale that you want, then using your device, they will all uh, go through that scale together. It's just that you can reduce or increase the volumes individually and they will stay linked that way. Of course, we've got the forwards, backwards, the multi-function button in the middle. That's pretty much an overview. It's a rated at 30 watts. It's all pretty meaningless now what they, when they give you these power ratings because they don't tell you how they are rating or even what they're rating. So it's a 30 watt speaker. It can all be charged by USB-C. Looking really good on paper. I'm gonna go into those and see what else. Then do make some bold claims for this speaker. And one of those claims was un <laughs> unparalleled sound quality. That, that's always a, a little bit of a red flag to me. You don't get more subjective than saying unparalleled sound quality. If you took them to court, I mean, I, I, I don't, is the onus is the onus to prove on their on their behalf or yours? Because I don't know how I would prove what is actual even means to be unparalleled sound quality. Because if, everybody has different tastes. But hey ho, they're going with that. But they're also saying. They are meant for high quality tracks. They're, uh, they're looking at the high end, but they are SBC codec. But they're gonna bring out, if you play, if they're saying if you play poor tracks, you know, it's gonna, you're gonna hear the flaws in those tracks. These are not really meant for, I don't know, some of the, a lot of the stuff I play on here, which is EDM and some bass heavy banging tracks, some people call them. Uh, perhaps not the best way to test these, but hey ho, I'm gonna test these. Why? Because that's how I like to, I like to listen to that track. If they do well with that sort of music, I think they're going to do well in the real world. Why? Because they've got some of the best bandwidth in terms of those deep lows to the to the high highs are, is in uh, electronic music. No matter what you, all your so-called all your files, blah, 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 want to tell me. So, they say, uh, hear your favourite tracks and artists like never before. Well, how could you possibly hear them like never before? Well, you could put a bag over your head if you've never done that before. And of course, they'll be playing in a way you've never heard them before. But they do come with something called Bamboo Tex AWSM AI Audio. What is that? It's the first audio processing technology of its kind using adaptive intelligence. Basically, it fills in bits that they say are missing. They say it's the first of its kind. I remember probably about 20 years ago, Creative, uh, with their Sound Blaster sound cards, doing something that claimed to be, in other words, taking, analyzing the track as you're playing it, um, and filling in bits that they think are missing and transforming it. I remember Creative did do a good job, but that does it. It, does it mean it's transformed it and you hear it as it's meant to be, or is it just different? I'll leave that with you. Remember, Sony also have their auto EQ, uh, clear audio. No, not clear audio, something like that. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, you Sony boy fans, you know what I'm talking about. I didn't put this one on. It's been a bit lonely. I'll put them on as well. Uh, but my point is, it may not be exactly the same type of technology, but they're not the first people to try and have uh, on the fly 
uh, intelligence or an algorithm at the end of the day, isn't it? I mean, come on, let's define what it is. I think people are taking the mickey these days, making claims about, we're now, we've now got artificial intelligence. We used to call it an algorithm. We used to think, what is, what would be, the Turing test was supposed to be the, uh, the real test for artificial, artificial intelligence, where you couldn't tell if you was talking to a computer uh, or a real person. And do you know how, in the end, the first, the, they managed to get the full people into thinking they're talking to a real person? They made, the, they made the algorithm make mistakes. In other words, if you're too perfect, people are gonna think you're a computer. You've gotta have imperfections. So, artificial intelligence, I don't know. In the old days, they also would probably would have said, it's suddenly become conscious. Oh, I am rabbiting, it's just that, it's one of those my pet peeves that everything is now called artificial intelligence. I know some of it is self-learning, and you could make claims about that being artificial intelligence, but intelligence alone, that word, has connotations which, at the end of the day, it's still an algorithm running. So, what are we gonna do first, of course, Going to give you an overview, my little testing, uh, my frequency response measurements in my own setup. It's not an anechoic chamber. Not going to be the most uh, accurate, but it's going to be a good guide as to what to expect. So we have actual measurements from Rocksteady themselves. This is for the satellite speaker, and this is their subwoofer. They show it pretty flat for the subwoofer from 20 hertz. That would be amazing if we actually saw that in the real world. Some roll off down to 200 and then properly rolling off from 200, which kind of fits with the satellite speaker rolling off a bit at 200, but then from 150 hertz up, they're showing a really big peak, focused about 75 hertz. Presumably, they're measuring the passive radiators there. My measurement for the stadium speaker shows a peak, 7 kilohertz, which they actually, they're showing a downward slant. I assume this is probably an in-room response where we'd expect it to slope down. My measurements are quasi-anechoic, so you wouldn't expect that slope downwards at the high end, which just comes from the effects of being in room. So I'm seeing, yeah, the big roll-off at 200 hertz, but no real peak into the base. But we do have a slight upward tick around the 50 hertz mark, which presumably, again, is the passive radiators. It's very, very flat, even on my measurements, from 200 hertz to about 6 kilohertz, before that rise to that peak at 7 kilohertz. But that is a big roll-off from 200 hertz down. And I'm showing more of a 100 hertz peak for the stadium subwoofer. And if we look at 200 hertz where it seems to kick in to match the satellite speaker, yes, we're playing down to about 45 hertz, which at the end of the day is a great result. It's just not 20 hertz. Bear in mind, measuring bass is very, very awkward and difficult, especially using a home setup. So yeah, m my measurements are not in line with Rocksteady's measurements. Bear in mind, you know, these, I've got this this year, I got this in 2022 and people were reviewing it in 2021 and wondering if there's been changes since they first came out with, those were obviously early re frequency response measurements from the company. Are they still relevant? I don't know, but there are big, big, way outside margin of error in how they're measuring the base on, I mean, I don't know. I mean, they may simply be measuring those passive rates. It Measuring base is, is awkward and it should be measured separately to the, you know, for like 500 Hertz and up. I don't know how they measured it and it may be, I measure it in a way that I think is still relevant to what you will hear. And you could argue the way frequency response measurements are done technically are not completely in line with, you know, they involve, you know, if it was ported, you'd stick the actual measurement mic right up the port. It's not, you're not, don't do that with your ears. And you've got to remember mics are not ears, uh, me even measurements mics. They don't measure in exactly the same way as you hear. So I, I put that out there. That's the biggest disparity I've ever seen, uh, personally, from my measurements and other people's measurements. And the subwoofer doesn't measure like theirs. It would be amazing if this could truly play without roll on down at 20 hertz. However, having said that, it's got a peak at 100. It, it does appear to play down to 40 hertz. That's still impressive. I mean, that's proper deep bass. So we need to actually have a listen. And we always need to compare it. And, it, and as I already said, what's the obvious compare? It's the mini rig system. <laughs>
there's the thing. I, I keep seeing videos where they talk, oh, it's, oh, it's just on its own, lots of bass. And maybe it did at the time, or maybe they still do. Mine do not have satisfying bass. There is a roll off at 200 hertz. Yes, it does come up a bit again at 50 hertz, but you're not gonna hear that. It is a bit rolled off, but it is there. But, you know, obviously where the passive radiator is kicking in, it's not like in their measurements. It's not like people are describing. I'm able to put that. This, this is my channel where I did it like it is personally. And I have to be honest, I, to me, I don't understand either the, the measurements Maybe my measurement's wrong, but I'm playing it and I can't hear it. Maybe these, there's something wrong with these drivers or I don't know. I can only tell you I'm not getting any satisfying bass from these passive radiators. It's rolling off from 200 hertz. That's basically all your bass. Uh, and, and then we've got the volume, the, the problem with the difference in volumes. So, you know, there is, it is quite clear, but if you remove the bass, you're gonna make it clearer anyway. That, so a satellite speaker on its own, for me is a disappointment. It does, to me, it's not really a, high end you could say it is but I'd like to see it demonstrated especially when you're saying I'm paralleled well, I don't want to be coming down too harsh uh, but I think that's a win for the Mark III. Tell us the specs now a 70 millimeter woofer, for a 22 millimeter a tweeter and a surprisingly two passive radiators whereas we've got a single 73 millimeter driver and it's rated 40 watts and the other thing is that's a 978 gram speaker that's a 550 gram speaker. For me, there was a surprising lack of volume on the speaker. I, I, even, I even asked Rocksteady about this. I've had a back and forth. This appears to be, and, and it doesn't seem to be in line with a lot of the 2001 reviews, as I'm pointing out at the beginning, and I'm gonna point out. To me, I'm not getting exactly what other people are describing uh, in their reviews. To, to, to match to play it to match this at forty five percent. This is already at seventy percent volume, and it takes away. There's no point in trying to do this at a low volume. You can remember these speakers have bass adjustment. The lower volumes are going to sound more bass heavy because if they're, they're being played lower. Your ears are less less sensitive to bass at that volume. But once you start trying to really go have a bit, go have big differences in the volumes. It's not really fair because then you start turning the volume up and it's doing things it shouldn't have done. It's going to sound quite muddy because it's got more bass adjustment at lower volumes than this would have at 70%. So that's already a big, a big deal. So, so I'm not doing loads of different volumes. I'm doing the one volume because of the dis disparity in volume levels. We talked about their high-end credentials that they claim, but it's Minirig who do have Aptex on board. We've got SPC. They're both Bluetooth 5. Both do stereo band because obviously it's all about having big, you know, a full 2.1 system because they both have the separate subwoofer, subwoofer. Except you'd have to hook up the mini rig subwoofer via auxiliary. But on all on all the mini rig speakers, you've got a pair of in and out, so you can feed out the signal and you can feed in signals. It's so there's so many options, and that's the thing about the mini rig that you don't get with other speakers. There's so many ways you can use it. It may mean, may not be the best in any one thing, but it's those multiple ways that you can use it. Unfortunately, it is still barrel charging, and you can see. Look, we can, it, we are in the modern world. USB C is out there. We can get all the power we want. I don't know why they're sticking with that. Actually, it's only a little company. It's a British company, and there seems to be no. No new speakers now for, for years, I think. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe they're struggling a little bit. Just to say, made in the UK, isn't that lovely? Because where are these made? They're made in China. 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 In terms of the price, uh, £140, $170, about a hundred pounds uh, in the UK. So you can actually get this cheaper, but uh, but you've got to get it from America and pay export, import, export charges, wherever I don't know. About $120. So in, in, uh, in American money, $120. 170. So it looks that's a bit cheaper in terms of the battery. Well, 29 watt hours we know for the Mini Ring Mark III, which is pretty decent, isn't it? It's very decent for a speaker that size. But hey, we've got 18 watts. 18 watt hours. It's a smaller speaker for this speaker that's twice as heavy. They do both have auxiliary inputs, but said much more. You've got input and output, and we've got a pair of them on the Mark III. Only the Mark III can be used as a power bank. I can do that, it's not got a thing in me out. Because on the little lead <laughs> you get for charging, it can actually be reversed and used as a power bank. One thing I have in the favor of the Rocksteady is it will charge at 12 volts, 1.5 amps. 
So in other words, that's what? That, that's 18 watts of charging versus the seven and a half watts of the Mark III. Neither of them can, can put in a bath. Why is that out? Well, because they'll drown. Because they are neither have any, any at all. No IP rating at all. There is an app for the Mark for the Mini Rig. I find it a bit flaky, but hey ho, there is an app and it does work to a certain extent. No app at all for Rock Steady Stadium. So to set the, the, the Mark III's in stereo, you, you can do this on the speaker itself. This is the problem with the Mark III's. It's this flaky. Trying to pair them, the, the idea, I probably won't pair. And the, they should have wireless stereo locking. It used to work, now it's no longer working for me. And this, it's also hit and miss. For me now, to pair them in stereo, I have to go into the app and I have to do that each time. But in theory, you turn them both on, You've had it on the stereo before, this should be wireless locked, but otherwise you, you do a quick down on the master, which I think is this one. And it should, should, should go searching for this one. And it ne they never do seem to pair up, but that's how it would be done. Otherwise you go into the app. For these to be paired in stereo, you pair them on the speaker itself. It's a lot easier, it does work. And if you just want stereo mono, <laughs> I call it mono, they don't for some reason, you just flick that switch. From, from that point of view, they're a lot easier. Have a listen to a, a stereo pair versus a stereo pair. Bear in mind, there is a big volume difference, but I've played them at the same volumes. improve as a stereo pair the sound staging improves I would say the sounds sound staging me able to pick out some details is better than the, the mini rig mark 3 as you can see it hasn't paired and they never do and that's one of the problems these do pair without problem however it, to me it's not the greatest sound in the world because I have that lack of bass weight and I have a lack of volume if I wanted to go loud for me that it doesn't get to really satisfying levels because of the lack of volume I've got them at one on left and one on right. Obviously, that's how you do stereo. Uh, my question in my head was, am I robbing it of some volume by, by simply doing that? So I'm doing a quick test that A, will show you the difference between playing these in stereo and mono and also the difference in volume. So I'm not adjusting, I am a, not adjusting in terms of normalizing for volume. You would hear the actual differences playing at the same volume when you go from mono on both to stereo. Everybody likes to lose their mind sometimes. It's nice. Everybody feels a little broken inside. And that's alright. Sometimes you need someone to love you. Even if you can't see their face. Sometimes you need an easy escape. Cause I won't waste this, this, this place. No 
So for me, the difference between mono and stereo is two decibels. That's big. That's a bigger difference than I would expect. It's nothing to do with the track because I picked a track where left and right stereo were the same loudness. So that shouldn't affect it in that way. I do have to say, that it's, it is a lot better to listen to in stereo. It does work well. It's nice and focused. There is a nice sound stage, just lack of bass weight. It's, we've got a subwoofer. We're gonna have to pull the subwoofers into the, the whole story. Quickly, the overview between the differences. Obviously, there's a big difference in the subwoofers in terms of the size that you pull out the specs quickly. Just ob the obvious difference, first of all, is what the mini rig is long and ported, whereas this is a sealed unit. Uh, others to tell you, it's about £135, $160 for the Rocksteady, £140, $170 for the Mark III subwoofer. In terms of the battery, well, it's 29 watt hours. We don't know what the watt hours because they only tell you 15,000 milliamp hours on the this, this Rocksteady subwoofer. Whatever the voltage is, I mean, it's got to be two to three volts at an absolute minimum. It's going to be that's a that's a big battery. Even if it was three volts, it's like 45 watt hours. That's a big battery. It's a big subwoofer. Uh, that promises a lot. It is Bluetooth. That is not Bluetooth. You, you can use it as Bluetooth, but you'd have to stick, stick a Bluetooth dongle in it, and that makes it really really awkward. It is Bluetooth, it is proper wireless, and it's an SBC codec, and that's disappointing. The auxiliary, as I said, is limiting the use of this subwoofer, because unlike Mini Rig, the, the auxiliary is an input only. They are both rated at 40 watts, and there you see, it seems to be a bit, of a bit of a mismatch with the speaker, but of course, they're talking about huge multi-speaker setups, so maybe that's why the subwoofer appears to be a bit more butch than the speakers themselves. In terms of that drive, 132 millimeters, 132 millimeters versus 74 millimeters. So it does appear to be a lot more beefy on paper, but if you want to use this in 2.1 and, and look it up as they say, that with this as the host, do you know what my, my latency was on YouTube? 570 milliseconds. I think that's the worst I've ever tested. Um, and so that is a shame. Uh, if you want to use it for Bluetooth streaming, maybe you only use it for music and then that's fine. There, there is no app. That's the pretty much the overview. As I said, you can use even the subwoofer as a power bank. You can't use this as a power bank. So 2.1, a full left, right subwoofer, left, right subwoofer, 2.1. The battle is on. <laughs>
One of the problems for me with the with the Merig system, as I said, it's flaky. Worth it when you get it working, but it is flaky. There is headroom on the subwoofer, but I can't get it because as soon as I try and push the slider from its default to, to max in the app, it just resets itself. I'll get it at the point I push it, and then as soon as I come out to play my music, it resets to default. Whether it's the app, the speaker, I'm just saying this is how it works for me, and I can't get it. But if yours works, you will get a bit more beef out of it. This, this is beefy at all volumes, and in fact, from the frequency response measurements, you see there's a hell of a lot more adjustment at low volume than there is at high volume. It's the opposite on the Mini Rig Mark III. It does most of its work at the high volumes where the Mark III's start reducing the bass. They do carry a decent amount of bass weight at low volumes, and so, because we're playing these at low volumes, to match the volumes of the volume-limited Rocksteady uh, 2.1 system, you're limiting what the subwoofer is doing, and that's one of the problems. However, I have to say, the subwoofer does a great job. For me, this saves the Rocksteady setup. If the volume is okay for you, that's a fantastic listen. With the subwoofer, and it plays deep, it's doing a really good job. So these, are, when people talk about these on their own, I don't know what they're talking about, but as a proper 2.1 system, that's satisfying. I would like more volume. And for me to get the volumes I would like to listen to, I'm gonna need four of these for, for a proper stereo system to match the sub. I'm actually reducing, so I don't overpower the satellite speakers, I've got this subwoofer at 65%, whereas that's at default and I couldn't get any more out of it. 65%, there's a lot more beef to come, but it plays nice and deep, down at 40 hertz. It's, it's a decent old listen. So, the question is then, how volume limited is it? And how far can we push the mini rig? If it only really comes into its own at, at louder volumes, we're gonna have to go to maximum volume. See what the ultimate headroom is on both of these. But obviously, we already know this is gonna go louder. We know that's volume limited. I'm going to put the, the subwoofer to its maximum because I want to get a maximum volume out of them. I'm going to put these into mono because that's also how you get the most out of them. I'm trying to be fair. So this is a volume, a volume test, and it won't be, a, it won't be in left, it won't be in stereo. So in, not proper 2.1 because it's not left and right. It's, kind of, it's like a 1.1. It's about how loud do they go and how much bass will we get out of it. This is my maximum volume test. It's not hard to spot the massive difference in loudness between the Rocksteady 2.1 and the Mini Rig Mark III 2.1. But despite that, we do get from the subwoofer of the Rocksteady, we do see a big peak at 100 hertz coming out that sub for the Rocksteady, matching the Mini Rig Mark III sub. And indeed, at 55 hertz and down, it's the Rocksteady putting out more of the deep bass. And you'll hear more of that deep bass because it's relative to a lower volume across the mids and the highs. We are eight and a half decibels louder on the Mini Rig Mark III system, five decibels in terms of the peak, 
But in terms of that database, we're a decibel up on the rock study. Do have to point out while saying we do have more deep bass on the Rocksteady subwoofer. The Mark III sub is still putting out more bass. Its peak is around 70 to 80 hertz mark. It's tuned different. And there you have it. The subwoofer is the star of the show. For me, for this system to work, I'd need another two of these. Um, and then it would be a match. But then it have got a bit the hassle of five speakers. Kind of takes away the point. For me, what we need is an up upgraded uh, rock stadium speaker. I haven't got the bass that other people are describing from the speaker alone. It comes into its own with a subwoofer, but hey, the stereo on it is nice. It is an open soundstage. It is quite detailed, but it's volume limited is the, is, is the issue. So I wanted to get this video out. As I said, there's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of speakers I've been sitting on because I'm just not getting the chance to put these, put these out, but I've not retired. I'm doing these when I can. Um, this was exciting for me to wait for. It was less exciting to listen until I got the subwoofer out. This is a great sub, proper wireless. Oh my God, why don't, why don't they breed uh, Rocksteady and Mini Rig and make this speaker a two-way like that one and we can match it with all sorts of speakers. Is it? The auxiliary is input only um, and that's the problem. It's just for the, the stadium setup. That's pretty much it. Uh, no more last lift. I can't think of anything else to say. And I know these are always so long. Anyway, what have I, what have I missed? Just a chat, always missing something. And they did say within allowing you to transform your space into a fully immersive listening device, you will be able to hear anything and everything anywhere. I don't. A lot of marketing stuff. It's SBC. That was a disappointment. But it's just, the star here is is the subwoofer. I already said that three times. Why are you saying it again? I've got no idea. I'm trying to I'm trying to think of a conclusion. You pretty much got it. Or unless you've only come to the conclusion to hear what a lot of you do anyway, you're going to miss out this time, isn't it? Because it's all been explained in uh, other bits of the, uh, of the of the. As I said, these pe these two companies need to breed, and they'll have a perfect speaker. That's really really flaky. Um, that's not that usable. And one color. It's industrial. The things are about, not very functional for, for me. But people are raving about them. I'm just giving you my personal opinion. I thank you. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I got that life. I got that life. Ain't a project wife, got my logic right, cause I'm not your type. I got that life. I got that life. Sorry, my honey, get it right. I'ma just live my life. I ain't about that. I ain't about that life. Uh.